There are some patients and friends who continue to advocate no vaccination. It's pretty difficult and a struggle to convince them to have the vaccination as social media is also flooded with information against the vaccination. And therefore, it is very important that we tease out which ones are false, which ones are true. So this time, one of the major issues that I want to discuss is the social media viral video that looked at possibility of death after COVID-19 vaccination. What are the facts? So if you like my video, please click like, subscribe, and the notification bell so that you will be notified for any new uploaded videos to come. One of my friends actually sent me a message whether this viral video in his Viber message is true. This talked about a certain Nobel laureate personality that says all vaccinated people with die within two years. And apparently, having COVID-19 vaccination is a mistake. Is there a relationship between COVID-19 vaccination and death? So any social media that is controversial, it is very critical that you have to find out whether this is true or not. Obviously, the image allegedly quoting a French Nobel laureate on COVID-19 vaccination that was circulating in social media, apparently was found out that the claim is fake. But again, manipulation of social media has been the norm for those who are against COVID-19 vaccination. And unfortunately, a lot of our friends, a lot of our patients also get into the trap of believing that this false news apparently may have some truth to it. When we have a pandemic, meaning the disease is affecting the whole world, and we have to remember that we are trying to vaccinate as many people as we can. Right now in our country, we're trying to vaccinate all adults 18 years old and above. But the priority are those of the A1, which are, which are the healthcare workers, the A2, which are our senior citizens, and A3, people with comorbidities. So remember, the elderly, the frail, the sick are the ones who are in the priority list. So obviously, when you look at the Philippine death statistics, somebody will definitely die every day. And if that diabetic or that hypertensive happens to die specifically on that day and was given vaccination, there is a tendency for us to blame the vaccine. So if you look closely at these Philippine death statistics, for example, from January 2019 to June of 2020, which is the latest data I can get, you can clearly see here that monthly, there is a highest number of approximately around 57,000 deaths each month. So that's an approximately 40 to 50,000 deaths per month. And and usually from this data, you can clearly see that January recorded the highest daily average deaths, while June recorded the least daily average deaths from 2015 to 2019. So in terms of daily average, okay, take note, January deaths recorded the highest of around 1,677 average deaths per day in the last past five years which translates to 70 deaths per hour. So obviously, if any of those who were destined to die for that day was given vaccine a few days prior to that event, we will tend to blame the vaccine. And if you look at the all-cause mortality or the top 20 causes of death in the Philippines, in that the same period from 2019 to 2020, you will clearly see that the top one is ischemic heart disease, 
then neoplasms or cancers. Third will be strokes or cerebrovascular diseases. Then fourth, diabetes. So clearly you can see here that these are the comorbidities that we actually advocate among our patients to have themselves vaccinated. But these are the top conditions that have been shown to be responsible or the leading cause of death within that period. It is therefore obvious that it may be coincidental that these patients that we vaccinate die within a serious period of time after their vaccination. So how do we know that the vaccines don't cause our patients mortality or death? Let's look at the data. If you look closely at the number of shots or vaccinations worldwide, there's approximately 2 billion shots that have already been done. 13 billion shots are needed to go. So if you look closely at the data, Sub-Saharan Africa, the rest of Asia, rest of Europe, North America, these are some of the countries or areas that have already administered COVID-19 vaccinations. So all in all, we have already a tremendous number of patients who got vaccinated. So how do we know that they are safe? Definitely, because we have what we call as vaccine adverse reporting system, wherein all of these countries have their own local agencies that are being reported in case there are adverse events to a vaccine. And so far, if after 2 billion shots, you don't see a signal, then it should really be safe. So if you look at reports of death after COVID-19 vaccination, the Centers for Disease Control, for example, in the United States uses the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System or the VAERS to closely monitor reports of death following COVID-19 vaccination. The FDA, for example, requires healthcare providers to report any death after COVID-19 vaccination to this system. Reporting it to the system does not necessarily mean that the vaccine caused the death. It is the CDC's role to then follow up on any report of death to request additional information to learn more about what occurred and to determine whether the death was as a result of the vaccine or was unrelated. So CDC, FDA, and other federal agencies continue to monitor the safety of COVID-19 vaccines, including in our country. So for example, so far in the United States alone, there are now 285 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines administered from December um, 2020 to May of 2021. So far, we, based on this data. And during this time, this system only received 4,863 reports of death. That's equivalent to around point. 0.017% among people who received the COVID-19 vaccine. So what happens is the CDC and the FDA physicians review each case, each report of death as soon as notified, and CDC requests medical records to further assess the aspect of death of this particular patient. So what happens is a review of available clinical information, including death certificates, autopsies, and medical rec records so far based on the CDC report has not established a causal link to COVID-19 vaccines. But I know we heard recent reports indicating a plausible causal relationship between J&J &J Janssen COVID-19 vaccine and a very rare and serious adverse event, the blood clots with low platelets, which has caused certain deaths. However, in a recent publication in a BMG journal regarding Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine based on the Norwegian uh, Medicines Agency finding, is that it found out that the Pfizer vaccine is likely to have been responsible for at least 10 deaths to frail elderly people in a nursing home in Norway. This is based on the Norwegian Medicines Agency conclusion. It says that although the mortality in the nursing home is generally very high, the deaths of some of the nursing home residents after the vaccination was anticipated. And they wanted to determine 
whether the vaccine given to this frail elderly could have possibly hastened any deaths so that they can gain a clearer understanding of the risk and benefits of the use of vaccines, specifically as quoted to the mRNA Pfizer vaccine, to frail elderly people. Is therefore the recommendation that based on this data among frail elderly, that the benefits of vaccination for the very frail people with very short life expectancy should therefore be carefully assessed against the associated risk and that it is to your discretion that it may often be better, most likely for this subset groups of patients, not to vaccinate. However, the guidelines on the risk assessment issued by the Norwegian Institute of Public Health shortly after the first reported deaths of frail elderly patients after vaccination were adequate. So they advise doctors that they should assess such patients individually to determine whether the benefits of vaccination outweigh the possible side effects. Preventive measures such as good hydration, medication reviews and optimization of treatment of comorbid conditions may also possibly reduce the risk of fatal consequences from adverse reactions to vaccines in this particular group. In our country, the local FDA health authorities have recorded so far 24 deaths following COVID-19 vaccinations, although most were coincidental as most of the vaccinees who died already had comorbidities prior to the vaccination. So what the report states that out of 1 million vaccinated, 24 reported involving fatalities during the time. Of those 11 who died, actually they succumbed to COVID-19. We have to remember that it does not mean that you have already gotten one injection that you won't die from COVID-19 because you have a tendency to lax your safety protocol because you think you're already invisible. Unfortunately, you continue to be vulnerable until you have received the second dose and that the second dose of any COVID-19 vaccine is very critical to provide you with superior immunity against COVID-19. Eight individuals died due to cardiovascular or cerebrovascular diseases, which, as we said, are the leading causes of death in our country. And three died of other infectious diseases other than COVID-19. So almost always, most of the people who reportedly died a few days after COVID-19 vaccination were people with existing comorbidities. Most of the people should be vaccinated and that we have around 1,700 deaths per day or 70 deaths per hour in our country. Obviously, there is a possibility of a co incidental death following vaccination of COVID-19. But rest assured that data have shown that there's no relationship between COVID-19 vaccine and death, and therefore you'll be safe. What we know is if you get COVID-19, definitely if you're elderly, if you are with comorbidities, you have a very high chance of getting severe COVID-19 infection a disease requiring hospitalization and intensive care unit, and a very high chance of dying from this COVID-19 infection. So with that, I hope I have convinced you that when we give ourselves the protection against an infection, trust science, trust healthcare professionals, because as healthcare professionals, we want to do the best for our patients. We will not recommend certain procedures or medications or vaccinations if we know they can harm. This is Dr. Jerry Tan. Again, thank you for listening.